Break the monotony. Uh, you probably know what I'm talking about because you're probably human and you're probably an adult if you're watching this. And so uh, what I'm talking about is the, the monotony that we all experience at some point in our lives and probably pretty often if we have a routine um, at all, a routine at all. And so unless your routine is one that is continuously trying to break monotony, you probably have a monotonous routine that you live. Uh, and that routine, that monotonous routine can kill our drive to achieve our purpose, whatever that is. And so in today's video, I want to introduce you to a book that I read recently that has a great perspective for achieving your purpose, whether that's, uh, you know, success with wealth or success in relationships or success with having more free time or getting more done in your time or success in finding and achieving your purpose. And so I want to share that book with you today because it's it's been really uh, enlightening for me at, and the way that the authors look at breaking the monotony and achieving your purpose and your goals, whatever those are. And so the book is called 10X is Easier Than 2X, and it's written by Benjamin, Dr. Benjamin Hardy, who is a PhD, uh, a PhD in psychology, and he's writing it with Dan Sullivan, who is the world's foremost entrepreneur coach. He runs uh, a company called The Strategic Coach, which is an international company that coaches uh, tens of thousands of entrepreneurs and helps them achieve their goals, whether that's financial or uh, relationships or whatever it is. And so this book, 10X is Easier Than 2X, it's a paperback, it's ebook, it's audiobook. I've listened to, I have the audiobook and I've listened to it twice in the last, uh, I guess, since our last, since our last meeting. So in the last two weeks and it's, it's great. And the premise is, um, you know, that exactly what the title says that 10 X in whatever you're doing is easier than two X. And I know that your brain is saying, what, how is it easier to do 10 times more than two times? And that's what we're going to dive into. And so the first, uh, visual I would give you is that this is a picture of a 2x world and our society is built on 2x so 2x is just doing the same thing over and over and growing linearly over time so for example if we use a business example um, you know I'm a business owner I did x dollars last year in business and so on January 1st, when you're setting goals, it's not uncommon for people to say, well, I want to double what I did last year. I want to 2x what I did last year. And, you know, that's that's not an uncommon goal. But the problem with wanting to 2x what you're doing is immediately after you set that goal, your brain is saying 2x. I know what it just took to 1x or to do what I did last year. And now in order to 2x that or double that, I'm going to have to double all that I did, double the work, double the input. And so that can be disempowering and demotivating, right? Because yes, I'm glad I did X dollars in my business, but that was tough. Do I want to do twice as tough this year? You know, probably not. Um, and then another variable that they talk about when you're 2xing is that everyone's 2xing like that's the common goal that's almost expected in our society and so there's a lot of competition when you're trying to 2x everyone's trying to do that and so there's a lot of competition and if you look at it again from a business perspective if you're in a given industry if everyone's trying to 2x there's a lot of competition and ultimately what the only thing left to compete on is price and so it's a race to the bottom in price so you're doing so much extra work for less money and that's a that's a recipe for burnout professionally but it's a recipe for burnout too if you're trying to 2x a relationship and you're doing double the work to to you know please the person or whatever it is in the relationship uh ultimately that's not sustainable if that other person isn't reciprocating or you're not seeing the results you're hoping to and it leads to burnout and disappointment there. Um, from a time perspective, we all only have 60 minutes in an hour, 24 hours in a day. So getting 2x done in the same amount of time can be difficult uh, if you're not managing your time properly or not looking at time properly. And so, you know, 2x leads to burnout. 
two X leads to more competition, two X leads to lowering prices and two X, you know, if you think about it, how could I double my practice this year, my business this year, whatever your setup is, when it gets down to it, there's many pathways to 2X. There's a lot of things you could do to double your business. You could market more. You could advertise more. You could double your clients. You could uh, cut your fees in half so that double the people will pay you for what you do. Uh, but again, you'd still be making only the same amount of money for twice the work. So that's not going to be great. So the point of, 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 the, that, of the 2X and many pathways is with so much so many opportunities or so many ways that you could potentially double, it can be hard to pick one or you might try many and achieve none. And so you can be multitasking and failing that way. So 10 X is more like this picture. You know, it's, it's a, there's only one way to get where you're trying to go. And it's kind of, it, it might be a windy road. There might be uh, unexpected detours there and you might feel all alone doing it. And the reason you'll feel all alone is because 10X is a goal that by, by for most of us, we'd say, well, that's unrealistic. If I did X dollars this year, and by the end of, or if I did X dollars last year, and by the end of this year, I want to do 10X what I did last year. It's like, well, most people say that's impossible. But if you look at it from the perspective of, of, uh, if you stay open-minded and just don't throw it out as impossible, what happens with 10X is that it is such a large jump and such a, a big reach that it causes your brain to uh, look for the one or two, only the one or two paths that could potentially get you there. Remember with 2X, there's tons of paths you can take. And so it doesn't really matter which one you take. You're just adding to what you're doing. With 10X, there's only one or two paths to get you there. And in order to put enough effort and focus in to travel that one path to achieve the 10 X, you're not adding 10 times more to what you're doing. You're actually cutting away from what you're doing because to achieve such a big goal, you have to focus. And so you have to cut out things that are distracting your focus and that are not producing for you. So as a business owner, you might look at your processes and systems and say, Hey, these things aren't serving us the effort we're putting into this over here is not leading to outcomes that we desire. So let's cut this away and put, put the resources we're given to that process over here. Or um, uh, in a relationship, it might be, hey, these customers are more work uh, than we like. The, these 80% these of customers are only providing us 20% of our goal, whereas these 20% of customers provide 80% of the joy and the finances and the whatever that we're trying to achieve with our business. So we're going to cut away the 80% and focus on finding more 20% customers. And in doing that, when you achieve, uh, when you figure out what that 20% avatar is and you market better and achieve attracting them more successfully, your practice exponentially grows instead of linearly grows. So we want to, uh, when you pursue the 10x path, you're actually freeing up your life instead of adding to your life. Whereas in 2x, you're just adding more effort, more hours at the office, more tasks to do. 10x is you're cutting away. These tasks don't serve me. You're gone. Um, I, I need to focus on just these things. Uh, and I need to think, okay, I can't do it all. So how do I get to 10x? If, if I'm doing it all, and I'm trying to 2x, I could probably keep doing it all in 2x. I'm just going to, you know, kill myself over the year doing it. But to 10x, I can't do it all myself. So that moves me from a, how can I achieve this to, well, who do I need on my team in order to achieve the 10x? So it changes your thinking from a how mentality to a who mentality. We can't achieve 10x by ourselves. So we have to figure out, well, who do I need on the bus to be traveling with me? So these 80% of tasks I don't need to be doing, who can, who is passionate about doing these tasks that I can give these tasks to, and they're going to do it better than me and faster than me. So that allows that person to live what they love to do. It allows me to focus on my unique uh, expertise and get better at what I do. And together we all get better. And so the business or the, the, whatever the uh, project is gets done with higher quality, 
faster and likely opportunities and, and, and ideas spring forth from us all that wouldn't have in the scenario where I'm trying to do everything myself. And so um, if 2X, you know, is the monotony of, 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 you know, living every day, doing the same thing, just trying to do, do it harder. Ultimately you fall off the cliff from monotony and boredom and burnout, but 10 X is okay. How do we get from this side across this chasm over to this side where you could say the apple trees would be the, um, the fruits of our labor uh, at a 10 X level are, well, we have to figure out how to cross that chasm or build that bridge. And in order to figure that out, we need to first cut away the minutia that is unnecessary and we need to uh, figure out who needs to be on the bus with us to help us bridge that gap. So um, I think this book is very, uh, it's an excellent book to read, regardless of whether you're a business owner or not. There's excellent, excellent uh, time, uh, ideas about time management in this book. Uh, if you're a nerd like me and you like quantum physics and, and uh, you know, Einstein's ideas and and things like that, they have, they talk about time in this book from a chronological standpoint, like minute after minute, hour after hour, and a quantum standpoint. And the quantum standpoint's really cool because if you, if you implement the quantum time, then you're going to be more effective. You're going to have more free time uh, and you're going to just love what you're doing more than you are by following a standard clock. And to make you understand, give you clues about that a little bit more in the book, they talk about the work week and, you know, currently, you know, we are working an industrial clock, but we are an artificial intelligence world now, right? So we are computers and a lot of people work from home and, you know, there's, there's a lot more fluidity to where we are throughout our day but we're still working on a nine to five industrial type um, clock and calendar that, that is, you know, a hundred years old and, and obsolete at this point. And so they talk about in the book, how Henry Ford actually created the weekend uh, back in the early 1900s, everyone worked six days a week and Henry Ford was producing, you know, Ford automobiles and cars and they were producing more cars than they were selling. And he was saying, well, I need to, be able to sell more cars. And he said, but people work, you know, 60 hours a week. They work Monday through Saturday and all they have is Sunday off and they go to church on Sunday and go home. They're too tired to go do anything. So he said, the people who are the buyers for my cars are, are, are my employees, are my workers, are the people making the car. So he said, we have to sell more cars to those people, but in order to sell cars to them, we need they need to have free time to use them and they have to be able to afford them. So Henry Ford actually invented the weekend. And what he did is he said, all right, from now on, we're giving all our employees Saturday and Sunday off and we're going to double their pay. And so people, you know, started having more leisure time, had the need for cars. They started having, you know, with double the pay, they had money to afford the cars. So they bought his cars and enjoyed the weekends. And they talk about how for the rest of his life from that point, Henry Ford had to walk around with bodyguards because other car owners hated them because they were losing uh, market share and losing their best employees who left and wanted to work for Henry Ford and have more free time and more money. And so, uh, again, if you're in that monotonous routine and you just are like, hey, life isn't working out the way I wanted to, whether that's work or relationships or uh, free time and or purpose, give this book a read and let us know you know, how it changes your mindset and how that manifests into 10Xing whatever area of your life you're looking to change.